So there's a lot to talk about when it comes to the performance of the Oklahoma Sooners so far this season. And there's some things that the media got right and some things the media got wrong. We talked about this in the past and how everyone overlooked what Oklahoma was building. And it's starting to come to fruition. Now, granted, we are now eight games in for the Sooners and we're starting to hit that true mean. We're starting to level out to what the Sooners are. And my guy, Stats by Popo, just dropped off some uh, numbers for me on how the Sooners look in comparison to years past. And so we're going to break that down. There were some numbers in here that really jumped out to me that really tells the story of what Oklahoma is right now and what we can expect from a Brent Venables coach team. So let's dive right into that. But before we do that, welcome to Unfair Sports. I'm your host, Jay. Thanks for pulling up to the channel. We talk a lot of college football, a lot of OU football here on this channel. So we appreciate y'all pulling up. If you like the content, hit the like button as well as jump in the comments. We love that engagement from you all. It helps us small content creators grow the channel and spread our wings and fly. So let's talk and dive right into what Coach Venables basically said during his post game, as well as the comparisons of Oklahoma today to teams of years past. And I think we'll start on the defensive side because defensively, when I looked at the numbers, started diving into them with my guy and shout out to Jake Majors for giving me this information. You can see a trend with Oklahoma this year that's starting to come back to the mean of what they most likely are this year. So statistically, Defensively, the team is still good. We're still ranked in the top 15 points as well as points given. The averages are still there mainly because of the heavy load from the beginning of the season and how well the team performed initially. But similar to last season, you're starting to see everything taper off. And so when we look at the numbers here through the eight games of the season, let's pull up the defensive numbers here. I want y'all to check this out. We look at these numbers and Over the season, I've been giving us a comparison to the 2000 team because this team was playing similar in their capacity. And well, this is what those numbers look like. When you take in consideration that we're looking at a new era of football where there's a lot more passing, not as much rush, but you still have those power run elements. Yards are coming more plentiful in comparison, but legendary defenses help when your quarterback is what some people would consider questionable. I don't consider Dylan Gabriel a questionable situation, but a lot of fans do. They don't think that he's the guy. We have another video coming later this week to talk about what needs to be done when it comes to him. But defensively, look at these numbers here. 2000 team averaged 13 points a game, 2023, 17. So right now we're we're in the teetering mode of around 2009, 2010. You know, we're we're. Not our best defense, actually close to 2011, 2015. Those two defenses are what we're really close to at 17 points per game. We're giving up more first downs, and we have about the same amount of sacks, except for in those middle years, we were getting a ton of them. Here we don't, but the difference, the difference is, is this Oklahoma team statistically is up there when it comes to tackles for loss. So that's the one thing that I have kept the tabs on because Oklahoma was leading the nation in tackles for loss when we came into this game. And as of right now, Oklahoma is fifth at 68 in total in playing eight games, which is less than some of the other teams, but tackles lost per game. They are ranked fourth. So we are fourth in tackles for loss, averaging about eight and a half per game. We only got three against Kansas, which is pretty low for what Oklahoma has done this entire season. And then when you go through here, now this is the ones that jumped out to me. Completion percentage has gone up. We're now at 57% that we're giving up now 57 percent. it's not that great but it's not that bad back in the 2000s we were giving up in the 46 to 43 46 to 2000 2001 was 43 and some of the best defensive teams that we had we were giving up less now the 2009 11 teams were giving up in the mid 50s which those were some really good defenses in the brent venables era we're at 57. Now, we, we're seeing a drop from last year, which was 63% to 59. That's a staggering number to me. And then we're giving up less passing yards this year than we did last. And we're giving up much less run yards. And so we're turning the ball over. We're not giving up as many passing touchdowns or rushing touchdowns, but we're giving them up at times that we shouldn't. And so... The numbers that jumped out to me, though, is how we're giving up 370 yards of total offense, which would be 
fifth in this list here. I mean, 2011 was a really good team, and so was 2021 was the last year with Lincoln Riley. We're starting to teeter back up towards closer to those numbers, whereas in 2000, we gave up 100 yards less. Now, I told you this before. Statistically, we were back then, you didn't have the heavy passes, right? And Dylan Gabriel statistically is doing a lot better than what we were seeing out of Hypo slightly not saying he's much better slightly better than what hypo did back then but overall defensively we're seeing a slight regression week over week each week we're getting a little bit worse and a little bit worse and so that may be because of attrition we've seen injuries i have an injury update video out that's probably one big reason why we're seeing those numbers change but overall defensively we're a lot better than last year but not that far We've got some more work that we need to do to keep that going, get ourselves back to some of the historical preventables defenses. But the good thing is, is that overall ranking, we will continue to move up. We will still finish with a nice SP plus rating when it comes to defense. Right now we're at 30 in the nation on ESPN's SP plus. I believe that number is uh, quite favorable for us right now because you would think that Oklahoma would be probably worse than that, but we're not. We're not overall ranking. We're number 11 on the SP plus fifth in offense, uh, fifth in offense, 30th in defense, our special teams at 103. That's really dragging our numbers down, but we'll talk about that another day, but look at the offensive side of the ball. Now, this is the other thing that really jumped out to me about what Oklahoma's doing a little bit differently. That's helping them out. Offensively, we're doing much better than we were in 2000, but we're not up there with those historical offenses we had from 08 with Sam Bradford, you know, 2011, Landry Jones, 17, 18, 21. I mean, we're better than we were the last year with Lincoln Riley, and we're better than we were last year, mainly because passing yards are up. We're in the 300s like we typically would at Oklahoma. So the Jeff Levy offense works when you use it. Talk about that another time, but when you use it, it's up. And Dylan Gable's statistically leading himself to a season better than some of the other quarterbacks we've had here at 72% on average. He's completing up 71% of his passes. He's going to finish the season in the 70s if we throw the ball and let him do what he does best. And so the 21 touchdowns at this point is much lower than we've seen in the past, but it's up there with the 2000 team. The running yards. We're at 181 rushing yards right now, which based up on the the eight team sample we have here, that's a bet. That's better than 2000, 08, and 11. But it's behind all of the high powered offenses that we had. Typically, we have a very high power run game, and right now we don't have it. But crazy, we had 20 touchdowns. Technically, Dylan Gabriel accounts for a majority of those. So when you look at the numbers overall, you have to ask yourself, what did this really mean about Oklahoma? What does this tell us? that We're starting to hit that mean. I think statistically we're going to maintain in around the 480 range in yards per game. I don't anticipate anyone keeping us under that. I think the Kansas game was an anomaly because of the weather. And we were very gun shy. But I do expect us to pick that pace back up going forward. We've got some favorable weather, except for probably BYU for the rest of the season. And I don't see why we don't go out there and kick some tail. So looking at this and everything, hop in the comments. Let me know. What's your thoughts? How do you feel about what needs to change for Oklahoma? There's a lot of things that we need to do to get better. But overall, when you look at the numbers themselves, we're not bad. I went and looked at a... a um, a post by stats of war and he posted a graph of how bad did you really lose in a success rate? We were way better than what Kansas were like Kansas won the game, but they were in the negatives. Like they didn't have more successful plays than us. And we beat ourselves. We learned a lesson from that. If you made it this far, you like the content, hit the like button. If you're new to the channel, subscribe, love to have you join this great family of college football fans. I know I've got a lot of viewers that aren't subscribers and I would love for you to join the family as a subscriber. And then we will get you uh, those notifications. So, you know, when the content comes down the line. So YouTube says, check out one of these videos, highly recommend it. We're going to keep talking up these sooners. There's a silver lining to this loss. It's an L, but it didn't break us. So let's bend, not break. We'll talk soon. Peace.